<laughs> um, last hard upper day of my entire prep. I am so happy. Um, Tristan is filming for me today, which is amazing because he doesn't have to do this. He's just a kind, kind good guy. But uh, this will be the video I released before I release my peaking video. Um, this is technically the start of my peaking process. I'm six days out currently. My first day of depletion was yesterday. So I'm just gonna lay the foundation, talk a little bit while I'm doing my hard, my last hard session about the way the setup's gonna look. Maybe you guys can leave me some comments about how you'd like me to structure each thing. Like I can put the entire water process, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, followed by the sodium, just like in order in the video. I could just make it all at one time or just here's Monday, here's Tuesday, here's Wednesday. Um, again, that will start on Wednesday, however, so it'll be like Wednesday through Sunday. Sunday's the day of the show. I'm also gonna try to sneak Mike back there and get some fucking filming in there for you guys. But please leave comments about how you would like the peaking video to look. I'm probably gonna ask Tristan some advice too because he's the fucking king of social media at this point. Um, so yeah, let's get through this last hard session. Upper, I'll deload lower tomorrow, deload the next day, then I'll just move into my pump sessions, which is stuff I'll talk about in the peaking, uh, peaking video. So today, one hard incline, one hard flat, one hard row, one hard pull down, lateral delt, bicep, tricep. Very simple, I'm combining my upper sessions to do one, just basically one hard set of each of those things because you don't want to have DOMS going into the peak week. If you have DOMS, you delay the uptake of blood glucose and the glycogen, as I've talked about many, many times, which is why I'm moving into that deload process for the last five days of my, six, five, six days of my um, peaking. So, one heart set each. I'm gonna start warming up. Probably do back first, just because I like to look juicy with the push pump afterwards. So, I'm gonna get to it. So I'm gonna start with a similar machine row. I'm gonna keep most of the exercises to machine stuff today. Um, not trying to use too many heavy compounds just to reduce the axial loading, reduce the systemic fatigue from those. These machines at M-Torture, or the M-Torture line, are fucking amazing. They're smooth, no joint pain, and they're very similar to the movement patterns I've already been using, so we don't really have to worry about any novelty being imparted, which would likely make me a little more sore than I'd like. Uh, one hard set, we're not really gonna have to worry about that too much anyway, so I'm gonna warm up on this machine here. Again, this line is absolutely insane. If you ever get the chance to use it, you have to. And it's, so if you come to Vegas, this gym is the gym to come to, torture gym. Uh, I honestly have never felt machines this good in my life, and I'm not just saying that. They're so fucking smooth. Um, you guys will kind of just see how they work. Even like every part is a moving part. These rotate, this moves, the seat adjusts, and this converging kind of at the peak contraction, it's just one of my favorite things. Um, what is this one called? The outward rotation row, I guess is what this one's called. But I'm gonna go ahead and warm up, then I'll do, go into one hard working set. You see I moved this back really far because I'm a huge fan of a big flexion over the top of any machine row pad. And this one even swivels. So like, let's say you're a female and you have a breast augmentation, for example. This thing actually kind of gets out of the way and uh, is a lot more comfortable for that kind of situation. Also just for me with these flexion rows, this is fucking perfect. Uh, the engineer who makes these machines is phenomenal. I believe the Korean made just, I'm not gonna say, I say so much good shit about this, these machines and these videos, man. Like this uh, pulley system here makes it feel very, uh, almost hydraulic in a sense. Like you ever use those hydraulic machines? Yeah, yeah. They're fucking gnarly, right? This feels very similar to that. Lots of, like on the stretch, you're getting a shitload of tension. I have to like calm down my excitement so I'm not making myself sore. <clears throat> cool. 
So that'll likely be my working weight. With this machine movement specifically, I was in the 15 to 20 range. So I'm basically just gonna do one hard set. 15 to 20, about one in the tank. Um, same thing for a pull down. Then I'll move on to my pushing stuff. And I'll get zero pump, but it'll be a fun time. All right, guys. Let's all die together. Three, two, one, team. Pooped. I feel like I'm drowning from all this water. I'm already a gallon deep. <laughs> so yeah, I increased water yesterday, seven days out, to basically 1.5 times a baseline that I took over three days, which came out to roughly like one and a half gallons. And then I increased my sodium to match that. Um, a little equation for you guys about three grams of salt paired to a gallon of water is pretty good for normal concentration. Just blood plasma level, serum level, things of that nature, and just regulatory function. This way you're not running into any issues where you're drinking more water, you're not increasing the sodium, which can make you hyponitremic, uh, can really decrease blood plasma and it actually initiates an aldosterone issue where you're retaining more water because of that. So excess sodium with not enough fluid or excess fluid with not enough sodium, both can lead to a watery look. So that pairing of those micro nutrients, electrolytes and water can definitely help you. So yesterday I had about two and a half gallons of water and about seven, eight uh, grams of sodium. So that'll be today as well. Uh, and then again, Wednesday, I'll have that full peaking video out to you guys. I can kind of lay this all out in more of a structured manner, but I'm trying to get you a little bit of what I've been doing for the last couple days since the peak will be basically midweek. Uh, yeah, let's move to the pull down. Then I'll do some pushing, biceps, lateral delts, triceps. So keeping it similar pull down as my meso, straight, straight bar pull down. Somebody's really strong. I'm not that strong. That just 405 for 12, I'm not that strong. <laughs> Regan must have been over here. Although I did humble Regan on his channel, if you guys didn't see that. We had him pressing 225. I think he got seven reps on bench. <laughs> That was a fun time. We'll be doing more videos together. I made his training on the app actually, so you guys can see that. I like this, it has a nice slight camber. So when you come down to touch the chest, if you have more range of motion in you, this little camber here allows you to get really fucking deep. So you guys are gonna notice, I don't think I've done too many pool sessions here, but I'll give you some cues since I'm making this one-off video anyway. You'll see a lot of people lean back a shitload on these. It actually takes a little bit of tension off the lats. Vertical, vertical pulling is always gonna be king for lats. I don't care what your favorite influencer says, your favorite self-proclaimed biomechanist. Um, 
who's actually just a functional anatomist. Pull downs, especially with a lot of thoracic extension, not leaning back, but literally just instead of this, this thoracic extension from that T-spine is going to help you get a way better peak contraction in the lats and help you keep the tension in the lats. So leaning back might take some off. You might hit a little bit more rhomboid, a little bit more mid trap, a little more rear delt. This heavy emphasis on that thoracic extension is gonna help us keep ourselves in a prime position to really target the lats. Since that's what we're trying to do on vertical pulling, not on rowing guys. Since most of you are always asking me about, well, what about your lats in that row? Okay, what do you mean? What do you mean about my lats in that row guys? So instead of doing this, I'm just getting it all from the spine. Boom. Pull you hard at the top, big stretch. people with these like, want to know what a good starting and stopping point is. The full stretch is obviously that stopping point or starting. When I can't touch my chest anymore, I kind of count that as my, just basically my metric for rep tracking so I can actually be consistent through my mesocycle. People might ask about like, well, what if most of your reps are to the chest and then some are like right below the chin? And I do some lengths and partials. As long as you can keep track of that and it's truly right below the chin, you can use some sort of metric to track. They actually have phone, app, phone apps now. You can see the distance traveled to a certain implement. So you set your phone up behind you, you have the app record you. That's fine. I'm just a really big fan of having a clear means by which we are progressively getting better. And the standardization of your technique is the best way to do that. Can some length and partials here and there be used as an intensity technique to sequester metabolites? Absolutely. But people throwing their baby out with the bathwater and just talking about how amazing your length and partials are already with like two studies. It's a little fucking ridiculous, guys. Um, feel free to utilize them, absolutely fine especially on something like a pull down, pull up, or assisted pull up, where you can go full chest, then to the chin, it gets a little harder, you're going like parallel. Sure, that's fine, because you're getting a lot of this, a lot of stretching of the lats, which is what you want. Same thing with rows. If there's a way for you to clearly track, that's awesome. I'm a bigger fan of making damn sure I'm getting better over time. That's the surefire way to, to get better in here. Um, so I stopped touching my chest. That's fucking failure for me. So I'm really, right there was about one in the tank. You guys saw I touched the chest and it was getting pretty tough. Try to find a good way to standardize your technique. Four inch of motion is the best way. Um, if you wanna throw in length and partials here and there for intensity techniques, be my guest. Be your guest, see if you like them. I've tried them, not a fan. Um, a lot of excess fatigue for no fucking reason, if you ask me, but. Yeah, to each their own. I'm not the uh, end all be all wizard. I just, I know a little bit of stuff about a little bit of things. It's kind of weird, huh? It's like all strided. Why can my ass look like that? Shit. Am I gonna win? You know, it depends on how much they like asses at this show. Yeah. Huh. You get pretty strided glutes. Huh? You do get pretty strided glutes. They're strided now. Yeah, yeah. Can't really see, I don't think. 
What's your take on the, like, how much cardio do you do? Uh, I just do steps. Steps? Oh. It's mostly informal cardio, but if I, to, to get most of my, if I get really high on my steps, like 14 KOs the last four weeks, yeah. I have to do some sort of, like, formal cardio in the morning. I'll do, like, a 30 to 40 minute walk just to get, like, my first 5,000 steps out of the way, and then the rest of them I'm usually, yeah. But a lot of my work's at the computer, so. Sometimes I end up going on like a night stroll too. I'm like, fuck, I'm only at 10K. You get one of those computers with a treadmill. I know, right? <laughs> that shit makes it so hard for me to focus. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> so I had Incoin Smith, this meso. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, probably just like 225 or something. Something light, am I right, Tristan? All right. So I'm going to do this. And then probably a flat dumbbell press. Those will be my pressing. I don't have a bicep ladder, no, tricep, in no particular order. Pressing on this compared to the arsenal, ridiculous. I feel like you just throw this to the ceiling. It's not a floating smith, but it's very light. Floating Smiths were actually designed by a sports scientist who was helping NFL linemen with explosive training. Because when you're a lineman, and you start here and you push, they were doing basically incline throws on a Smith machine where they would put like 225 on, throw it up, and then basically the concept of a floating Smith is that it comes down really slow. So, that's actually why those were designed. Kind of pointless for hypertrophy training. Last week we're in the Atlanta, uh, yeah, Atlanta, no, Fuck, Arsenal, the Arsenal one, <laughs> Whew. which was about 250 equivalents for this one hard set per muscle group for my upper day. I'm taking the same exercises. Try not to impart novelty. I'm actually decreasing the load a little bit because oftentimes in this circumstance, there's a lot of pharmacological things going on that create what we call dryness in the joints and just overall your appearance. So that might be the implementation of an AI for some coaches. It might be that they dropped out somebody's testosterone injectables a couple weeks ago and they're on the tail end, tail end of not having much estrogen in their body. So reducing that load is a smart idea just to help you make sure you're not putting yourself at more of a risk of injury than you need to be. But as far as this goes, 
I technically beat the reps from the previous week, reduced the load, and just did that one hard set. That's perfect. I'm not gonna lose any muscle because I went down in weight. <laughs> I'm getting a pretty decent pump because I increased the reps. So just to be on the safe side, guys, if you wanna try this in the future for your, your peaks, seven days out, seven days, don't train. Six days out, last hard upper body session, period. One hard set of everything kind of like I'm doing today. 15 to 20 range is totally fine. Reduce your loads by like 10, 15% from the previous week of your last hard training week. From there, the next day, five days out, deload your lower body. True deload, don't do hard shit like this because that can blur your lines on stage and stuff. Especially for somebody who has big, big quads. Four days out, three days out. Let's say four days, you do another deload or you go into your pump sessions, um, three days out pump session, two days out pump session, one day out don't train, and then hit the stage. And pump sessions are basically deload sessions where you're doing a full body circuit, similar to this, one set of everything, two sets of everything, really fucking light, really reducing the load. So I might be using 185 on my pump sessions, two sets of 10 to 15, stopping pretty far from failure. And that's very equivalent to a deload session. So. Just getting the blood moving. As soon as you initiate the carb up process, it will help you to uptake the carbs a little better. Um, it triggers what's called GLUT4. There's a GLUT4 mechanism that actually helps you to create the insulin response necessary. Not that you're not already very insulin sensitive because you've been dieting for so fucking long and carb depleting, but you that last little bit of training just to keep tissue around and to help with the carb up process is very smart. So that's how you can do it. You can try it out for yourselves. Um, and like, feel free to come to this video, your next contest prep season, ask me questions. Feel free to go to the peak week video, ask me questions there. I'm always gonna be on there answering questions. Um, and if you really want insights, go to the RP YouTube channel. We already made a, a whole peaking video. And then the Team Forum Forum, where you can ask me anything you want and I respond in a very detailed, organized manner. Uh, with a little bit more nerdy shit. So uh, feel free to join that as well. On to dumbbell press, 30 kilograms. So this is my flat pressing variation of choice. I took a basically a press from my horizontal emphasis day and my vertical emphasis day. And I'm just doing those. So I start with these on my flat press day. I start with those on my, well I technically start with flies, but I start with that for my vertical pushing emphasis day. This is real life. Probably just do a push down. And then a uh, curl, lateral delt. I'm fucking tired. This is crazy. Tristan is applauding me for shooting YouTube content, guys. While I'm this tired. General. <laughs> Yeah.
Who should bring the board? It's fucking nuts. That's pretty cool. So fun fact about varicose veins. I've actually had this delt vein since I was 16 years old. Um, but these ones are definitely a little more varicose. Fun fact about those, if they're not causing pain, there's actually no issue with them. They're kind of just a visually unappealing thing that people don't like. So. Until I'm experiencing some sort of weird issues with it, or I go into a doctor and they tell me otherwise, this will be part of my existence. Gross. He's gross. We maintain that effing technique all the way to the show. Tristan got a little taste of that. How was that session for you? That was a tough one. The dual cable new tech thing we used. That shit was brutal. That's the cool thing about the app, guys. With me as a coach, it might take me two, three message cycles to figure out really like where somebody's true MEV to MRV range is. With the app, it's just constant biofeedback. Every session, it's like, how's the pump? How's the soreness? How's your joints? How's the workload? And you're answering that shit right there. Whereas with the coach, you give me a brief update at the end of the week. You're like, oh, I feel this fatigued. Like, hmm, these were kind of hard. I can modify your volume, where it's really kind of like plug and play guess, guesswork. The app is just like, nails your volume right away. So I was just talking to Tristan, and like, we basically have found his cap for his volume for each muscle group, like one mesa cycle in. So we're gonna basically keep massing, do a similar mesa cycle for Tristan coming up, slight modifications here and there, things he didn't like or things that he's gonna start using here. Um, and he'll be basically set using the same biofeedback metrics. It's gonna start his volume a little higher, might end a little higher, we'll see. Um, it's fucking exciting, man. People are loving it so far. And then we're done. It's gonna be me and him, one and two. Fucking me. Me and that guy. Hey, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's doing. He's doing it as well. Oh, yeah. So, one and two. Remember that. That's that's the main competition in New Mexico. He's gotten fifth, fourth, 
in third this year, I think. Third in Charlotte, I believe. Fourth in Pittsburgh, fifth in New York. So, it's gonna be me and him. I fucking love this thing, oh my God. So smooth. Benito. Is that your shirt? Yeah. I was like, what up, Regan? Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 fuck it. It was fantastic. I loved it. I loved every second of it. That's the video, guys. Hopefully you got something out of this one. Again, I'll be posting the full peaking video. You'll see him again. That'll be fun. Um, might do a little posing. We'll see. But thank you guys for watching. Tristan, you should flip the camera around and tell them what they're supposed to do to my channel. Like, comment, subscribe, YouTube stuff that Jared's too. What else? I just want to say thank you for watching, guys. Oh, yeah, what a sweetheart. Really hey, this is my camera guy if you want to know how hunky he is. Woo. He's taken. He's, he's, he's a married man. Subscribe. <laughs> awesome. That's good. Now, uh, I would just bring this light, light one more inch back. Just this one? Just, yeah, just aesthetically, just straight one more inch. Yeah, perfect. I like this. Yeah, yeah, no thigh gap right there. Control. Mm hmm. Good. Yeah, 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 this is nice. This is nice. See, see from the bottom, like. So, just for, just for the camera, let's show them, like, what a lot of people make mistakes here. This? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, there's a freaking gap there. And. You can have monster legs, but just completely butcher yeah. this pose and look like you have this huge thigh gap here when you don't need to show it. All that. I mean, I hate that. And then they like flat the lower back. It is too. the worst thing. Yeah, yeah. And then when you you're doing it like that, you're also helping tilt forward. Yeah, so you can't. And then your lower back just disappears too. There's no instead of this. Instead of this, see now they're hanging. Yeah. So kick glute, glute up, and you're gonna see a lot more. I think it's just. Doing it every day for like going into the show. Yeah. It's just gonna be the next like how many days are you now out? Six, Six days. So just like every day now. Like it's fine that you didn't maybe do it every day mm -hmm. leading up to today, but like if you do it now, you're just gonna just fall right into it. Okay. You're gonna fall right into it. Cause you know, you know. And now just just really trying to pull from there. Yes. Did you see that? Yeah. Right here. That's so hard. It's in the toes. It's in the toes right there. Yeah. This part. As far as my fucking boots. Yeah. Even and and personally, like for me, when I hit when I hit from the side, I'll, I put my foot exactly where yours is, but I don't press through it at all. All my weight is on my on my back foot. So and I just I'm literally like this. I can hit the I can hit the pose with this foot in the air. I'm so a fan of that that's too. That's the that's the except for. Are you trying to get a little more out of the quad? I guess. Right. Yeah. Because our hamstrings both. I just our, both our hamstrings are dropped so low that if I can get this little bit of okay, this doesn't show unless you put pressure there. No, you're right. You're right. So the reason I put a little bit, I don't put a just a, okay. So just a little bit, then? just enough to pop out those striations here. Yeah. Because we both have like yeah, this we both have the same hamstrings. Yeah. And you stand tall too. I like that. Just a little I don't. Bit. I hate you know a lot of people come down here like yeah. It's like dude. Um, Side chest and classic. Mm -hmm. So you guys hit it like this. So people try the Arnold like really high. I see people like here. With the foot? Yeah. Like that? It's so weird. 